Good evening and welcome to TL Physics. Uh, my name is Sarah and today I'm going to cover Snell's Law. Now Snell's Law is basically like the refraction you would have done at GCSE, just with more of a mathematical implication. So refraction is the idea that light em enters an optically denser material and slows down and that's important. Optically denser, it has nothing to do with an object's density. This is separate material property. Okay, so light enters an object, and when it goes into there, it has it is slowed down. It has um, a different speed inside it. Okay, and we can measure that, and we look at how the speed of light is affected, and we call that the refractive index. And we're going to use the letter n. N is the refractive index and that is the speed of light divided by the speed of light in the substance. That's what that S is for. Remember the speed of light is 3.00 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. It's also important to note that you have to know that the refractive index of air is 1. We assume that light isn't affected by air. It's exactly the same as it was in a vacuum. And this is important for the formulae that you're going to be used. The exam board assumes you know that the refractive index for air is 1. Now, if you can imagine light coming in or your car coming in at an angle, one of the wheels, if it ends up in a dirt track, or whatever, if one wheel starts going slower than the other, you start to turn. So as you're going along here, this wheel gets slow, you start to turn. And this is what happens during refraction. And I've drawn a diagram here. Light, and this is important, so you must draw arrows, okay, to represent the light ray coming in. And it hits the surface of the material and it will start going slow and it will start to turn. And it is this angle here compared to this angle here that Snell investigated. He was looking about how much it turned and the material properties. And he came up with this formula here. N1 sine I equals N2 sine R, where N1 is the refractive index of the material coming from, and N2 is the refractive index of the material you're going into. I is what is known as the angle of incidence. And we measure that from drawing this line here. This is called the normal line. And anything that you draw, any diagram you draw for refraction must have a normal line. This normal line is perpendicular to the surface. This R is the angle of refraction. This is the angle from the normal line to the light ray inside. So let's do an example question. Let's say an object is coming from air to glass. Let's say the refractive index of glass is 1.67. Let's say the angle I'm coming in at is 30 degrees. Let's find my angle of refraction. So I look at this formula and I'm going, where am I coming from and where am I going to? So I'm coming from air and the refractive index of air is 1. 
my angle of incidence is 30 degrees. That equals the material I'm going into sine r. So the first thing I do is I get rid of this chunk here, the bit on this side. I don't want to rearrange prior to getting rid of as many signs as I physically can. So sine 30 is a half. A half times one is also a half. So 0.5 equals 1.67 sine r. I'm going to divide this 1.67 and I get 0.3 equals sine r. And how you undo a sine is you use sine to the inverse. So sine to the minus 1 0.3 equals 17.4 degrees. So this angle of refraction is 17.4 degrees because it's turning closer to this normal. This is Snell's law. Now this can be used in all sorts of ways later on with total internal reflection. This is a very special case when this angle of refraction happens to be 90 degrees and we'll talk about that in a little bit. I do apologise. But it's really important, one thing that's really important is that this value here, this here, before you inverse sine, if it is not below 1, it's not, your computer, your calculator will have a math error. If you get a math error, double check what you've put into a calculator. So this is the idea of refractive index, that an object, when it goes into light, it starts to slow down and will start to turn. The amount it will turn is based on Snell's Law's formula, which is on here. And it's important to remember N2 is what you're going into and N1 is the material coming from.